Hi, I'm Shannon. I am the Child Life Manager for Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, and we are going to be presenting today on leadership best practices. I have been a Child Life Specialist at Joe DiMaggio for 14 years and have been a manager for the past two years. So I um, am looking forward to presenting to you guys today, and thank you for providing us with this opportunity, and I'll pass it on to Carla or Penny. I'm not I sure. Are I you don't there? see Carla up yet. Um, this is Penny, and I am now with Child's Play, and I am looking forward to um, being part of this um, symposium today. Uh, my background, I spent five years at Seattle Children's, and before that, I was at a Shriners Hospital in California for 15. So um, I've been in the child life field um, a long, long time now. So I've seen the, the evolution and I'm excited to, to talk about how that compares with what's going on now with this new gaming technology specialist. I guess we'll just wait and see if Carla is able to join. Get herself up. We've got friends checking on Carla right now just to let you okay. guys know. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I guess I could elaborate a little more. Uh, I am from uh, Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, as stated, but we just onboarded our first gaming tech specialist. So we're very excited. He has been here. This is his fourth week. So we're very excited to have him. And it's really been a huge success so far being able to work with uh, Penny, the child's play mentor and really get that mentoring throughout this process um, of receiving the grant and then just kind of knowing where to go from there. So it's been a really great experience uh, working with Child's Play Charity and having the availability of Penny as a mentor. Um, I'm sure there's many of you out there who have have gaming and tech specialists or are gaming and tech specialists, but it's, it's very new to us and to the hospital. So having someone to guide me from my perspective has been very helpful. It won't unmute. Oh, no, there it goes. Oh, hi. hi. Well, leave it to me to have technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Thank goodness for all my backup. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Um, hi there, I'm Carla Barentine and I'm the um, Director of Operations for um, the Integrative and Creative Care team here at Children's Hospital. I'm really excited to be here. I heard you all introduce yourselves already, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, and I'm assuming you all see the PowerPoint. Is that correct? I can't. Yes. Okay. Thumbs up. Thank you. All right. So today, really quickly, what we're going to just try to do is Make sure that you um, um, have the com okay. Similarities between the development of child life and gaming and tech. We're going to talk about um, sort of the development of the field and the profession, strategies for new program implementation. And we're also going to talk about the current demographics of the gaming and technology specialist and best practices for leadership. So um, I'm going to give you just a really high level um, history of child life. Um, we like um, like this profession, we started and a lot of people didn't know exactly what we did or, or you know, we got all the great comments like you're paid to do that. You, you studied to do that. And so a group of child life specialists who weren't even called child life specialists, then we all had different people were called different things in different places. They joined to form a committee within a larger group called the Association for the Care of Children's Health. And within that group, a few years later, they organized, the Child Life Specialists organized and really started rolling and figuring out what they wanted to do to become um, their own profession and what needed to happen so that people understood what they do. So there were a lot of champions throughout um, their list there uh, that really helped launch the field. And of course, there are a lot of pioneers. I wasn't going to go into the full history lesson for you, but did want you to know that um, we started within a small group, as uh, I think a lot of the gaming and tech specialists are within child life groups, um, mostly is what I'm seeing. And Penny will get into that a little bit later. Um, 
But the really important thing here to think about right now is, you know, who are your, our key partners for this gaming and technology specialist? And, um, you know, I have a few listed there and feel free to type in the chat um, who are other important people that we should be leveraging as we really start to build, build this field. We're definitely on our way, you know, to go from one or two in this field to now, I think, uh, I think Eric said 30 plus are in the field and I think it's growing on a regular basis. But, you know, we know that um, Child's Play obviously is a huge partner. They're the reason that so many of these positions exist. The Association of Child Life Professionals, you know, how do you leverage them? But who else is out there? Um, and also, as many of you like us probably know, it's philanthropists and donors that really got both fields started um, um, by their generosity and by donating and getting us um, in our program. What we typically do when we have a new idea is we get funding from somewhere else and we prove it. So um, the next session will talk a lot about how what data we use and how we justify positions and research and what what your data is already showing us. So um, think about that. Um, as far as key partners. And really what I'm trying to do today is just plant some seeds for you all to be thinking about um, as we move forward and, and really develop this profession. So one of the first steps um, that that committee that I was talking about from, from before of child life specialists, they decided they were going to write a position paper and they were really going to look at um, some of the different things, almost everything that's listed on this um, slide right here. What are the standards of practice? You know, what are what's training going to look like it, as far as it, is there an education component? And then when you're done with the education, what is clinical look like? And for child life, as many of you know, that's practicum and internships. What's the scope going to be? Um, what are the competencies? Um, and for us, they looked at certification. I, of course, added the research and quality initiative piece because as everybody on this call knows and we've heard yesterday and you'll hear in the next talk um research and quality are in having data and evidence-based practice are you know obviously instrumental in moving forward um the other thing that i think is going to be really important is choosing the name so this is just um a small handful of the names that um, we were called um, obviously, Charlie Specialist is on there, but all those other names. Um, we and, and again, this varies by um, people were coming from different backgrounds, different parts of the country and the world, and so people and they were also functioning in different ways, which is no different than um, than the GTS. So um, for my child life specialist colleagues, feel free if you want to type anything else on there, but those are some of the lovely things we were called. I left puppet lady off because I just couldn't bring myself <laughs> to write it, um, but that was also um, an old name for us. So really my my point here is to say, you know, the importance of naming, and, and it sounds like a lot of you have landed on the gaming and tech specialist title, but I know that it varies from institution to institution. And my recommendation or what I'm just trying to plant a seed is as you are all thinking about moving forward, think about coming up with a unified name because it really does provide this lens that a profession can project the self-image and establish credibility. For us, there were all those different names. So people would say, you know, wait, wait is that the same as a healthcare? Um, oh, I'm glad JJ got called a play lady. Um, is that um you know, the, I guess it also shapes the social discourse, you know, what people are saying, what they're talking about um, when they when it comes to gaming and technology specialists and what are the relationships to other relevant professions. And then obviously, you know, you'll want to think about what are the occupational functions? I think right now, most of you are clinical. Some of you have some administrative we've heard from today, but I would imagine as this field grows, that will become a thing where, you know, there's some clinical and then there's going to be some of you who are going to be leading these programs. Um, so the, think about that. And I think that, you know, whatever name you all land on will be important. And um, again, uh, you're going to be surveyed. You're be cl currently being surveyed. And this is one of the questions we're trying to get to is what what are people called in different places? So I'm going to hand it over to Shannon now so she can give you her experience as a new leader and who just start, is starting a new program. Thank you, Carla. 
Um, so I will give a little bit of insight from a new leader and new program perspective. Uh, what prompted the need for a GT for a gaming tech specialist? Uh, we'll start with the staff feedback. Uh, so part of my leadership practice is to round regularly with my staff. Uh, and one of the questions I ask is how I can support them. Do they have the tools and resources that they need to do their job? And most of the feedback that I received uh, was the lack of technology and the lack of tech support. They were lacking the tools and resources to meet the request of our patients uh, and our tech equipment really was not updated. Much of what we had needed repairs. Uh, my team didn't have the time for the repairs. It was not a priority for our IT department, uh, so we had some struggles there and then virtual reality use was also a challenge for our staff. Uh, we did have some virtual reality goggles donated, but due to staffing challenges, we weren't really able to utilize them as much as we wanted to. Um, so looking at the future goals of the program, uh, after receiving the feedback from my staff, we met to come up with an action plan to address the immediate needs. Uh, so we started with the grant funding for a child life assistant, because at this point we did not even have a child life assistant to support the staff. We were able to get funding for a full-time child life assistant and a part-time child life assistant. Uh, this position provided support for the staff, patients, families, and our closed circuit television program. But again, we were still lacking the tech support. Uh, so looking at the tech needs um, and after our current program needs, after onboarding the child life assistants, uh, we also were looking at the onboarding of the new person before our child life zone open. Um, one of my child life specialists brought the idea of a gaming tech specialist through Child's Play. Uh, we still had a lack of support for our technology needs and knowing that we had our zone, we really wanted to get someone here and onboarded that could really help with all of that, all of our tech needs and help prepare for our child life zone. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the child life zone, which it seems like many of you are just by reading through the chat and listening to the sessions, um, but a child life zone is a state of the art therapeutic play area inside of a hospital where pediatric patients and their families can play, learn, laugh, and relax. Uh, and Child Life Zones are made possible through a partnership with Garth Brooks Teammates for Kids Foundation. We are now in the design phase of our Child Life Zone, which will be completed in October of 2022. So we are very excited about that. Uh, we put a lot of work into it. Uh, so we're excited to see our fit final product. Uh, our zone will have a production space, a green screen, virtual reality, a theater for movies, closed circuit television programming, a gaming wall, a maker space with a 3D printer and other STEM activities as well as much more. So as you can all see, this is definitely, um, space is definitely need of a tech specialist. So that was part of um, our planning before uh, applying for the grant. Uh, another area of focus uh, was our closed circuit television programming. Uh, due to COVID, we really enhanced our programming, um, but once our volumes got back to where they were normally and were busy, um, we obviously had staffing challenges with trying to maintain the programming that we started during COVID, uh, so that has been a challenge. The child life assistants have been very helpful because they've been able to run the programming, um, but we are looking to have our gaming tech specialist assist with this as well. Uh, as many of you have talked to and talk, discussed throughout this great symposium, um, CCTV programming is such a great way and a great platform to connect the children. And so we want to continue to enhance this programming. Uh, currently, we only host one show a day with our art therapist, music therapist, yoga therapist, and then our child life assistants hosting a game show of their choice. Um, so we're hoping to really have our gaming tech specialist uh, be able to assist with this and provide, provide more fun and interactive programming for our patients and family. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. All right, so we have the grant. Now what? Now what do we do? Uh, so moving from the state of if only to the reality of actually making it happen. Uh, so the first step was deciding what is the best and highest priority to our program. Uh, we did some, I did some brainstorming with my team as well as the Child's Play mentor, uh, which was very helpful. Uh, some of the things we discussed in that brainstorming for the gaming tech specialist were our closed circuit television programming, 
gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality, our MRI goggles, our iPads, um, and a few more ideas. But it's been really interesting to see that just through the last few months, uh, how my mindset has changed with the goals of the program. Um, in the beginning, I was thinking of every possible thing the gaming and tech specialist could be doing, uh, but throughout the development of the job description and interview process, uh, I've really been able to um, get somewhat of a better image for the development of the position and my priorities uh, and having a vision for the planning, transitioning and implementing the program in the future zone uh, was actually was going to be critical. Um, having them onboarded prior to the zone opening to assist with the planning and design meetings uh, and then once it's designed to transition our tech current tech programming into the zone um, just having familiarization with the equipment and needs for implementation once the space is open so having that tech specialist here um, from prior to implementation in the design phase of the zone was going to be very helpful for us some of the hurdles we encountered along the way. Um, so a really positive hurdle is uh, was the excitement expressed by leadership. Uh, during the beginning phase of this grant submission and process, I reported directly to the CEO. Uh, and when she was informed that we received the grant for the tech specialist, she immediately wanted me to present to our executive and department leader team the new opportunity for our hospital as well as our patients and families. Um, and she thought this would be good for recruitment for the position as well. Um, and I did receive a referral the very next day from a physician referring someone for the position. So that was exciting. <laughs> uh, having the direct line to the CEO was great. Uh, managing the expectations, I did not initially see as a hurdle, but now looking at the bigger picture, it was a balancing act, uh, trying to manage her expectations and the many other duties as a manager. Uh, the excitement was great because it provided motivation and encouragement, uh, but one important step is to uh, that I'm realizing is managing the expectations and setting those parameters of what this person could reasonably and successfully accomplish. Um, as many of you probably know, um, but everyone has an idea of what the gaming tech specialist uh, they would like them to be doing or projects they would like them to be working on. Um, but it's, you know, going to be my job to work with the tech specialist and setting those parameters and the expectations. Uh, one thing recently that has also come up is uh, managing the excitement of the gaming tech specialist and the child life specialist. Uh, the child life specialists are so excited to have the gaming tech that they just want to use him right away and get him <laughs> out there with the patients and families and gaming, which is the ultimate goal. But, um, you know, I will have to work closely with the gaming tech specialist to help set the goals for our program and just have that open communication between myself and the child life team and integrative team as well uh, to set those expectations. So we're all on the same page. Uh, another encounter, another hurdle encountered would be developing the job description. HR was not a resource, so I had to figure out who and where the support would come from. All of our grant funded employees in the child life department are onboarded as contracted employees due to the outside funding. Uh, so this is why I did not have the support of HR. And I kind of saw this as a positive and a negative. Uh, the negative was just it created more work and was time consuming for me. Um, it was a challenge developing the job description myself, but I had the help from the Child's Play mentor with that. Um, but I learned a lot through the process. Uh, I saw how other programs set up their positions uh, and it was just really reassuring to know that we can structure our program to best fit the needs of our hospital since every hospital is a little bit different. Um, another hurdle, the recruitment process. Uh, again, no support from HR, so creativity was necessary. Um, I reached out to local gaming clubs. I reached out to local game stops. I researched universities with gaming degrees and submitted the job description to their career development department to have it posted. Uh, I posted on LinkedIn and then we uh, sent out for recruitment to hospital staff as well. Um, and this was very time consuming uh, with all the other uh, responsibilities I have as well as managing the rest of my team, uh, but it was definitely worth it because we were able to find the right fit for our program. Um, another hurdle, interviewing the candidates. Uh, it's definitely, as some of you on here 
can attest to, but challenging to interview for a position outside of your area of expertise. You know, what what are you looking for? Uh, what kind of interview questions do you ask? Um, so I was able to get some sample interview questions from the Child's Play Mentor, which again was very helpful. Uh, looking in the beginning, I in my mindset, uh, I was looking for a child life specialist. I said, I want a child life specialist who can help increase the bandwidth of my team, meet patient needs as necessary. Uh, but the more that I was able to research and look into the position, the more I really wanted someone with a tech background who was a gamer. Um, and that I think the process of not having HR and going through all that myself was very helpful. Uh, another is uh, finding the right fit for our team. Uh, finding, I did realize throughout the process that the in-person component was critical. Uh, the in-person phase of our interview process helped guide us to our top candidate. Uh, one component of the position here at our hospital, probably as many others as well, but having those people skills and initiation uh, when engaging with others. So we were really able to assess this during our in-person interview and tour of the facility and was really our, our deciding factor to um, our top candidate. Um, some of the other hurdles, uh, absence of HR again for the onboarding process, uh, the contract paperwork and access to everything in our system had to be initiated and coordinated by me. Uh, this was very time consuming and uh, during the middle of pandemic, very frustrating because a lot of things take longer than usual. Uh, lots of following up on submitted tasks and paperwork while managing the rest of the team and responsibilities. Uh, so some of the lessons learned at this point are hiring and onboarding. The journey is not complete. The journey is actually just beginning to get started to build your program and document the success of the program. Uh, managing expectations and continuing to set parameters. Uh, keep an open mind. Things will continue to evolve and even change as this position continues to grow, um, which I've already seen in my mindset just from the second I heard that we got the grant. Um, and so planning for future, uh, the grant has a limited term for two years, so I soon will need to start looking into conversations about long term stable funding. Uh, luckily, our foundation and CEO are already having conversations about this, so I know I will have the support system in place that will work with me. Um, but in having those conversations, I will need to present the data and statistics to validate this position for the long term funding. And I'm currently working with the gaming tech specialist as part of his orientation. We are developing a tool to track his time, his community engagement and inventory of supplies. Uh, so if we start collecting all that now, uh, we will be able to track his progress throughout the next two years. Um, he started from scratch here, so I'm really excited to see his progress over the next two years, but really even just the next month or the next six months. Uh, he's only been with us now for four weeks and is already making a huge impact with our child life team, our community, and even some of our patients and families. Uh, so I just want to say a huge thank you to Child's Play Charity for providing us with this opportunity, and I will pass off the penny. So thank you all. Do I have it? Because I didn't see the take control. I think I had stopped presenting. Did that make the PowerPoint go away? It did. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're just demonstrating why we, as leaders, knew we needed game tech specialists. Right. <laughs> It's not like we didn't rehearse and do this several right. times. <laughs> Sorry about that. OK, I'm going to take control. And skip ahead. OK, so I'm going to take it from here and talk a little bit about the evolution of the gaming technology specialist position. However, from everything I've been hearing um, yesterday and today, you know, everybody here in the audience pretty much knows how this all came about. Um, I think hearing it firsthand from JJ yesterday um, was, um, you know, really kind of brought home you know, how, where and how and, and the grassroots of this all. Uh, but from a child's play perspective, um, they, um, we partner with about 200 programs 
hospitals around the world. And really the the goal is to, you know, in, improve children's lives in the hospital. But what happened um, early on for them um, in 2003 on, as, as they were um, building their, their charity, they started visiting hospitals. And they very quickly became uh, the go-to type of uh, organization when one of us in child life had a, a tech p question, we would often turn to child's play. And they got really good at, at spending time while they were visiting hospitals, um, just asking, you know, what's working for you guys, what's not working for you guys. Uh, and what they really started seeing, because they visited so many hospitals, is that the same things were being uh, kind of the obstacles were the same at, at a lot of different hospitals. And so they would start sharing with each of the programs, well, over here they're doing this, or over there they tried this, or could you have you thought about reaching out to um, so-and-so? So really what um, I saw from, from Child's Play early on is that they interact and have their listening ears on with a lot of different hospitals. And we tend as, as, as hospitals to have our core group that we, we interact with. We're certainly not interacting with 200 other hospitals. You know, when we, we benchmark, we'll reach out to other hospitals, but for the most part, we're not going to have that same capacity. And I think that was a real, um, without even realizing at the time, that was such an important role that they were already establishing early on in this. So over time, um, it was finally realizing that it wasn't about not having some of the technology um, available. Having the technology available didn't make it get to the patients appropriately. And you know, for whatever reasons, child life has been the go-to in hospitals for the most part for all technology. Anything that's going to end up with the patients is kind of becomes home um, in the child life department. And, and so they really realized, or we all realized um, as leaders in child life, I think we realized um, along the way that we didn't have the expertise um, because technology kept growing on us so quickly. We didn't have the expertise and we didn't, the child life specialist didn't have the time needed to develop the expertise in technology because as soon as they mastered a game set or mastered something, then the next iteration came out. And so, you know, we really started realizing that we needed what if, what if we had this? Um, and so in 2017, they, um, uh, Child's Play funded the first um, Game Tech grant, and that was with Carla's program in Colorado. Today, um, we know that there are existing um, Game Tech specialists in all of these states, um, and uh, not all of them have been funded by Child's Play. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly how many there are. And we know that there are um, game tech or game tech like um, positions uh, in Germany, Kenya, um, Canada. So by no means um, are, are, are we at Child's Play thinking that we're the um, keeper of or the the sole experts on this position although i will say having funded something like 35 36 something like that grants since 2017 um certainly they're on the the leading edge of of helping promote this so currently we have um what we believe about 36 gaming technology specialists providing patient facing services. And that's another thing to kind of differentiate between groups. Um, some um, hospitals, they really did have or have a program that is managing equipment, but not necessarily expanding into um, uh, clinical care, um, providing um, care directly to, to patients. So kind of wanting to look at 
how many are in that realm, we think it's right about 36. So as this from 2017 to now, that's not very many years to go from one and and JJ, I mean, he was out there functioning too, but the first official um, uh, grant for this position um, was 2017. So from there, this explosion, and I think what you've heard um, in the first day and a half of this symposium is that there's definitely those that were very grassroots. The um, I call them the unicorns of our profession that were child life specialists, but that were techie enough to be able to say, no, this is what this needs. We need this position that's dedicated for this. And they've they've built that and they've been able to do this and, and it's been great. Um, but as leaders, we started realizing in the child life field, now wait a minute, we can't wait because I've done this a lot of years and in interviewing countless of child life specialists, I'd say, so do you like technology? And most of them, 99% would say, no, not really. So I couldn't wait around until I happened to hire someone to to grow a program. It was really reaching out and starting that process um, myself. So um, while I was at Seattle Children's, I hired um, uh, a game tech through Child's Play grant in 2018. So I've been on the, the leading edge of this. Um, and seeing this as it's grown and evolved. Um, and one thing that that I realized in in the the last few years is that leaders needed it was great the frontline game techs have a fabulous um, networking set up amongst themselves. And um, Eric Blandin with um, Child's Play does a, a wonderful job with them. But that didn't exist for the leaders of all these programs or the leaders of the programs wanting to launch this. And so um, the one thing, again, that Child's Play does really well is listen to um, feedback and be willing to try new things. And that's where this position of mentoring um, came into being. Um, and it's really, we're, we're trying this out and we're looking at, hey, can we make this easier um, for leaders, quicker for leaders, if they can get going with someone that can help bridge them with other leaders, help kind of push them along, I hate to say the word push, but sometimes it really is. Um, and one of the things um, that, that I was really um, excited about when I um, first came on a few months ago, I was tasked with helping to support programs um, receiving grants in 2021, as well as helping those over the last couple of years. And so I've I've got this group of 2021, 2020, and 2019 um, grantees. And the first thing in, in getting to know these programs was that, as you can see in this slide, the size of programs are really pretty evenly distributed. It is not just the big people that get the grants. Um, Child's Play has, has provided grants to as small a program as a one person program, all the way up to, of course, the 21 plus, the big grants, um, big hospitals out there. Um, and I think that part of what we're really going to learn, like through the symposium and through all of this, is how are these programs a little bit different because of the size they're supporting and how can we find the commonalities that go along so i i think that that's that's really something that's exciting for me to to be part of is not just one size but all size programs can benefit and we need to be able to demonstrate that the other thing that um, I found pretty quickly on in in um, my initial um, meetings with the programs is that there's common questions, common concerns, um, and Shannon did an excellent job of highlighting her particular um, obstacles. But I can tell you from talking to um, 16 hospitals now or so, um, and then plus some that are, are um, I'm not directly following. 
we all experience the same things. Um, and so it's helping. And then how can we put together resources so that, you know, somebody has questions about job description, we've got resources to help them. Um, and it's, we shouldn't be just stagnant, here it is, and never look at it again, because this is an evolving um, process, evolving um, career. So we need to be always like making sure it comes along with, um, this is what's helped in the past, and when you get done, send me what worked for you, and then we'll update it for future. Um, and so we really looked at this this idea um, is this a balance are we developing the program or are we developing the employee and it's a little bit of both because this is so it's not it's not like we can um, hire for most of us it's not like we're going to hire a um, game tech specialist that's been around for a lot of years and um, can come in and know what their job is. We really, as, as Shannon showed, she's developing the program itself, but she's also developing uh, a posi the person who is now launching this position that's never existed before um, in her program. So, so it's really exciting. And, and part of what um, I think I say as, as a mentor is, um, what success going to look like for you now, and then be ready to look at that again in another six months or another year. That, at that point, you're gonna be looking at it with your game tech. What did success look like? What worked, what didn't work, and be ready to let go and try new things. So we really wanted this to be about leadership best practices. Um, and uh, I think, some of what is being illustrated over this last day and a half and, and um, the next talk, I think, is going to, to really be an exciting one about research and, and validating um, and, and all of that is, is great. But I think that one thing that I keep hearing over and over again, um, it, and I think that's what's probably going to help launch this past um, just a position that um, if you have it, everybody's happy, but it's hard to be accepted as a, uh, as a new evolving profession in its own right, um, it is really getting leaders on board and, and following best practices. So if you do a Google leadership practice, it comes up with a gazillion hits. Um, and I, I looked at and pulled the ones that made sense. And then in talking with both Shannon and Carla, um, experienced leaders, we really came up with these. Um, and we're going to end um, here in a few minutes with having you guys jump back on with your own suggestions, your own things that we should keep in mind um, as, as leaders as we go forward. Um, and any questions, but some of what we really believe is is going to be key in the symposium um, is is right. We're already doing these things. Um, we have to learn from others. Um, we have to be ready to have mentor relationships, and that's um, been proven to be important at the frontline level with the game texts in their weekly. Um, um, relationship building conversations they have amongst themselves. We need that as leaders as well. Uh, we need to be ready to share with others um, and promote relationship building, um, not in a competitive way. Um, and that's within our own hospitals as well. Um, we need to be able to um, share what doesn't work as well as share our successes. Um, and we can only do that with a trusting relationship um, that we've building and promoting um, and, and not just looking out to, to have the, the biggest um, uh, program and those types of things. We need to take chances on people um, and be willing to develop skills. And I think that's been one of the, the uh, helping people. And I think we just uh, hired our last um, grant from this year was hired this week, which is super, super exciting. Um, and 
that's really taking chances on people uh, and, and bringing them on and, and trusting that, that you pick the right one. Um, be transparent, like Shannon mentioned this with her staff um, in their excitement. I think that it's really important to be transparent with, you know, this new gaming tech, and I said this all the time when I had hired Garrett, was that he's one person and he can only do one person's amount of job every day, even if he has good intentions of doing 10. So um, be transparent with your with your team and with your um, the game tech himself or herself. Um, be transparent with all the excitement in your building as to setting ex um, priorities and moving forward carefully. Um, be humble, be humble to, as a leader to ask questions and, and be able to admit when you, um, need to research and figure out before you jump into something. So never, never lose sight of that, asking questions and communicate, um, on a regular basis. So I'm going to let Carla take over control again. Is that what you need to do, Carla, or are you just going to open it up and if you'll, just go, if you'll just go to the next slide, it has the contact info and, oh, okay. and it just seems like um, it, I was just following the questions and I think the smaller hospital question got answered um, when you see that. Um, but my advice would be they said they used quantitative data to try to get a position and administration still pushed back. But what our biggest success and I think a lot of programs would attest to this is, you know, try to get the funding, apply for the child's play grant, try to get the funding and prove it and then what I found is, you know, after, um, you know, a short period of time, there were tons of media stories on having our gaming intact. The, um, our executives started using it as kind of a bragging thing that made us look different than other hospitals. And so after a year, um, data and, and reputation really made it that they were able to refund. And then the other only other question I saw in there, uh, I think, Shannon, you already answered, but it was really like, what does the job description look like identifying qualities and things like that. And I think, again, reach out to any of us. Um, Penny is, you know, the mentor for Child's Play. So she has like, I've given all my interview questions and everything to Child's Play. And I think a lot of us have. So they're probably willing to share kind of a nice bank of those type of things and what qualities. Um, I guess if either of you want to answer which qualities are the greatest need, like once you started figuring out what is like priority quality that you're looking for when you're hiring. Um, and maybe we can answer that and then we'll probably need to wrap up. I think we're coming out of, out of time. OK, um, so I'll just um, jump in on the on the one uh, about funding and developing um, finding grants. I think that um, obviously uh, Child's Play is is a huge um, uh, supporter of this, but I think once you put together a really nice grant um, application, there's no reason not to look beyond um, who else you might be able to tap into. And so um, one of the resources I developed early on is the, you know, kind of like a quick guide on, on how to get this process started. So reach out if you're early, early on in this process and would like how uh, would like me to send that to you. I can do that. But I think that that's what's really key is that um, is is putting together, you know, a really strong message and getting that um, packet together, then that let ends up creating your job description for you that ends up creating those next steps um, and sometimes we get it turned around and we get the money first and then we're trying to play catch up with all the rest of it but in reality if you do all of these other things you're going to be that much farther ahead perfect and then the only thing i would say about the the job description is outside of for us outside of the um, gaming and tech experience and knowledge of uh, working with children and adolescents um, was like I had, a, had said in the inter in the presentation was the in person interview. We really wanted someone who had the great interpersonal skills and took initiative and just you could see on the tour and he's on the call now, Matthew, but you could see him when we were meeting and greeting others. He took that initiative to to greet them, to see how they were doing, to interact. And I feel like at least here and probably elsewhere, but 
but as a gaming tech specialist in a new role, you got to have that initiation and motivation to step out of your comfort zone and um, put yourself out there. And that that was one um, key component that that we were looking for that helped our um, gaming and tech specialist stand out from the rest. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Last thing I'll just do is put in a plug for what Eric put in the chat yesterday about the uh, primer, the gaming and technology primer, which maybe Eric, you can drop in again. I think that's a nice one sheet for those of you looking to, um, you know, have talking points and, and think about how you want to sell to administration. With that, I guess we'll hand it back over to you, sir. Uh, by sir, you're talking to me, Carla? Yes, I am. <laughs> You three are amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, I know that I am so thankful for forward thinking and um, uh, future centric leaders in this space. Uh, without it, we wouldn't be making the sort of gains we are and having the information content and and shared community that we do here in the symposium. So um, thank you to uh, to you guys for for such a great presentation, uh, Carla, Shannon and Penny. So appreciate it.